Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at Colors Free, which as the name uh, suggests is a free instrument which is available for Halley and Sonic. And as it says here, it's a free instrument with sampled synths, textures and much more. So it's got some modulation, etc. We're going to be taking a look at that. It works with the free Halley and Sonic. So this is a slight change in sort of branding. So Halley and Sonic is now free. It's at version 7. So you can download this and use this regardless of whether you've got any paid Steinberg products. But what you do have to have is a Steinberg account because this is activated using Steinberg licensing. So you'll need to scroll further down the page and then click download now, which will prompt you to sign in. Now, if you've signed into an account where you've already got Steinberg products, etc., you should see at that point that you are automatically logged in and that the colors free license is in your Steinberg licensing account. So if we have a look on my account, we can see that amongst other things, I've got colors free here. So that means that I can then activate it in Steinberg licensing. So this is one of those things where while you could download colors free without activating it, if you don't click that link on the site, you don't get the license assigned to your account and then you won't be able to activate it. So just make sure you do that. So once you've done that, you don't need to click the download for Windows or the download for Mac link because all that will do is download the Steinberg Download Assistant, etc., which you've probably already got. So if you haven't already got it, click that. If you have, don't. Uh, and then you can just download it as we'll see in a second. So to download this, you'll need to run the Steinberg Download Assistant and you will find it in VST Instruments and Plugins. So I, I would expect it to be in sort of sounds, but it's not. It's in VST Instruments and Plugins. So if you scroll down, you should hopefully find Colors Free. And then when you do, you may well find two entries in there. So we've got Halley and Sonic 7, which is the free uh, instrument. So it's not Halley and 7. So you've got no problems installing that and also colors free. So I'd suggest to install both of those. And obviously the speed, etc., the time it takes to download will depend on your internet connection, but it's pretty much a case of pressing the install button. It will download it, verify it, and then install it to the right place. If you've got any issues with uh, installation or location, things like that, there's another video on the channel on managing your Steinberg content because this is uh, Steinberg content. So we put in the place where all your other Steinberg content is. And then you can also install Halley and Sonic 7. And again, should just be a case of clicking the install button and waiting for it to do its stuff. And once it's gone through all the installer malarkey, you should see two green ticks on screen and you should be in business. So once you've done that, you'll be able to open it up and have a listen. In this case, I'm going to do it in Cubase, but Halley and Sonic will open up in a variety of DAWs. And it is free, so you can get it even if you don't own Cubase. So once you've got it downloaded, you'll need to activate it. This should be straightforward again. So you run the Steinberg Activation Manager. As you can see, I'm signed in. We can see the products that I've got, which are Steinberg licensing based. And it should just be a case of clicking Activate. And after a couple of seconds, you should see that activated here. So then you can use it in whichever DAW you want. But I use Cubase, so that's what I'm going to be taking a look at it in. So here we are in Cubase. I've got a instrument track with Halley and Sonic on it. So as mentioned earlier, this is the sort of rebranded free Halley and Sonic. So it's no longer Halley and Sonic SE, it's Halley and Sonic. It's on version 7, as is Halley and. Whether you think this is a coincidence that uh, Contact 7 is on the same version as Halley and is, I will leave for the viewer to decide. The, the change which we will see uh, is important here is that we have this visual uh, browsing of the media bay here which makes it much quicker and easier to get to the programs that you want in this case so we're going to go to colors free in this case here and we can see here's colors free 
Now, if you want to save some space on screen, you can turn it off with this folder here or F6 on your keyboard. So now we're down to a more traditional window, but you can always get that back there. So it's one of those things where you may find it useful to have that browser rather than the pop-up one, which was previously the uh, default option. So once you get Colors Free open, the first thing you notice is that it's a bit different because the patches aren't selected via the normal route. They are selected from within Colors Free itself. And also selecting them, you might stab around for a bit before you find out how you do it. So it's these little boxes here. Now you can click on this and drag it, but at the moment I found if I do that, I'm making it crash. So I'm not going to do that again. Um, it does work, but it seems to make Cubase disappear as well. And I know there are some minor little glitches with the early versions of certainly Halion 7, which I found. So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to spend the entire day restarting Cubase. But you will find that these, these sounds are very, very playable, certainly as far as I'm concerned. So this, this first sound, the default, it's a new day, is very sort of Boards of Canada, sort of ambient thing and it's the kind of thing to be honest i could just spend about an hour just playing around with a full-size keyboard and making these uh soundscapes so it would only be of interest to me but they would still be of interest to me so it's those really nice slightly wobbly slightly distorted you know even on a little uh, mpk mini that i'm demoing this on it's possible to make some some interesting little sounds there's uh, other patches to explore so the vintage strings i quite like and the way that it responds to velocity so you have to give it a fair bit of velocity to get some sound out of it and again that's a bit of a challenge with this keyboard but certainly need to give that you know a fair bit of velocity to get the most out of it because those when the filters open up it's definitely at the high end of that you may have heard that in the background where i absolutely hammered the key again so there's a nice selection of sounds in here They're certainly all in the same sort of area of the Venn diagram of, of sounds. So, you know, I think if you like one of these sounds, you're probably going to like most of them and find something useful about them. It's certainly one of those synths where I think it, if you know you need it, you, you'll go straight to it because it's, it's in that ballpark, etc. So all of these different sounds. even all the way to Wormland, which ultimately is where we all go, isn't it? So that's the basics of selecting patches, but what about the other two tabs? So we've got Easel and Master. So let's take a look at Easel first. So here we are in the Easel section so we're going to take a look at how you can actually program sound so obviously these are effectively presets but they combine different elements which you can look at in the easel section now this is starting off with uh, a new day so what i'm going to do is i'm going to disable this second one here so this at least answers the mystery of why these are here and also why they are different uh, brightnesses of the color so we're just going to turn that one off and then look at the controls here. Now, I think these controls are pretty dark uh, and hard to see. So I'm going to zoom in on them in the video for this portion, and then we'll just take a look at them here. So the first thing you've got is the volume. So you've got this volume slider, and that's reflected in the brightness of this rectangle here. So you can see the balance when you're in the patches page, etc. We've got a solo, which would obviously be much more relevant if we had other things playing. So maybe let's just take another, take that, that. So we've got those two together. And then if I solo this, 
you can do that. So you can just zoom in on the sound that you want for any particular part of this. Uh, we've got a pan control, which is fairly uh, self-explanatory. And then next to it, we've got transpose. So you can just click and slide this. So I'm playing the same key on the keyboard. You can probably see at the bottom, but that's transposing that. And it's got a range of 12 up and down. So, you know, not, not massive, but that will be useful. One thing slightly annoying, it doesn't feature double click to reset. So that's a little bit painful. Now this button here allows you to turn on whether or not your modulation wheel on your keyboard is going to affect this. So with this turned on, you can see I'm controlling the volume. So this will allow you to do, so you can see the, the mod wheel going up and down on the bottom left on the Halion Sonic keyboard. If you don't do this, if, so if you turn this on without doing anything, it won't reset it. So it may not be immediately apparent what that's doing, but that's what that does. So that little control there is, is modulation control of volume, which can be pretty useful. It gives you a bit more sort of playability in the sounds. And then here we've got the A. Now the A is the arpeggiator. So this has got some basis to it, but you need to click the play button, otherwise the arpeggiator isn't on. We can see we've got different So we go between eighths and eighth triplet, etc. Quarters and quarter triplets. So that's reasonably useful. And then you've got the actual length of the note. So there it's tiny within that gap. And there it's it's filling it, etc. So you can choose that. Get them very staccato, but that works quite nicely. And then we've got mode, which would respect what you've played, or if I play a chord. So that's playing it down. Chord, which is quite, actually, that's quite nice having chord as an option in there. And then that's the order that I actually played them in. So we've got a few options in here. It's not, you know, a super powerful arpeggiator, but it's quite nice. And obviously you can layer up different arpeggiator settings, etc. We've got a, uh, a tone control which in this case is set to cut bottom end. So this is cutting the bottom end there. And as far as I can tell, that's fixed. So there's not a lot of options available there. And finally, we've got the attack control. So fast and slow, which for this kind of thing is, you know, gives you enough and it's certainly, as you can hear there, you know, it's long enough to, to allow you to create some uh, developing textures. Now, clearly you can layer up different sounds. So here we have a different one, but what you'll notice is that the arpeggiator, which was present on the first one, is not present on the other slot. So when we click here, we've got modulation instead. So let's just solo this one. We'll put it on new day. And we can see that's modulating that there. So that's controlling that there. which gives us a bit of variation in there. And you can control the amount and the, the waveform as well. So obviously to get a square wave, you need to turn that right up and you can, you can see the effect of it. Whereas if we turn the amount down, we can see while it's, it's an on and off effect, it's much less severe one. So you've got, again, some nice possibilities in here. It's not giving you an infinite range of uh, controls, but there's certainly something nice there. Probably gonna turn that off to avoid any problems with people having photosensitive epilepsy. 
Now you can turn multiple slots on and you may notice that these three have all got the same sounds and this last one has got different sounds. So this has got the sort of percussive sounds in there. So let's just solo that. And we've got some sort of white noise, etc. Uh, so we've got those textury kind of things. So you'll find those in slot four. So it's worth having a look at that later on and playing around with those. But the, the options are largely the same on that, but it's just the sounds that are available change. We can reset this, obviously. The question is, is posed. And you've also got random. Now, randomness is always semi-nice, but whether or not you end up with something meaningful. Now, fortunately, we have an undo. So you can go back to a, a previous one. Now the randomness it seems to be a pretty full variety of random, so you're going to get something pretty weird, and it won't always generate sound necessarily. So you see, you got all sorts of things on there, but this is probably useful if you're not feeling particularly inspired. You might come up with something or learn something new and find a new combination, etc. So it can be pretty useful in that that area. But you can see the randomness is is certainly uh, significant. We've got lots of modulation happening, etc. Unfortunately, the the pitches don't seem to be random, so that's that's a good thing because that would have been probably a step too far. So in the master page, we've got a few other controls. Now, one of the things is decay. So if we turn that down on this sound, you can hear the decay time is much smaller, and there it's it's much longer. So this is pr probably I'd say that's probably you typically call that release rather than decay, but uh, let's not fall out over it. You know what it means. Uh, we've got a drive control. So we can hear there. We've got the ability to map the modulation wheel so we can control this so it might start from a, a midpoint etc and then go all the way up so you can see the mod wheel is moving the full range but this is starting at the midpoint because here is where i've set it to start you probably make it go down as well so as i turn that up you can see the mod wheel is going up but that's going down and we've got the filter being controlled as well. So we've got all sorts of malarkey occurring at this point here. And we can also have a bit of a bit crushing kind of lo-fi, LFI effect. So I mean, that's... You can choose how much of that and how many bits it is, etc. So there's, there's some options in there to play around with. Same for the filter. So again, that can be controlled by the mod wheel. And you can turn that on and off as I just did with the drive control. So we can turn all of these on and off, whether they're modulated with the mod wheel via this button here. So you can control the mod wheel differently for each one. So here we're editing the drive mod wheel control and that one's going up. So you can see that this one, as I move the mod wheel, this goes up. And this one's going down. So we click the E here and then click MW. And now we can make this one go down. So you can see you've actually got a lot of control here. Uh, the same would also be true by the looks of things for the chorus, the reverb, and the main output as well. So you've actually got quite a lot of modulation control where you've got real time performance controls. And this is quite nice, just establishing this curve because you can have things swapping over from one 
not a great example there, but from one control to another and by maybe making that less severe. So in terms of the mod wheel on here, maybe we'd make it come down less so the filter is not going to come down that much. But the drive is going up, etc. So that's pretty nice. We've got a chorus in here as well. So let's just turn drive all the way down and then so again, we've got a tempo synced chorus, which is quite nice. And you can control the phase, so the starting point relative to your beat. So if you're finding you, you want it to be up at a certain point in the bar, you can control the phase there. And again, mod wheel controls, which is nice. Uh, we've got a delay in here, so let's just turn the chorus down. Now this is going to be less apparent, probably more apparent if I turn the decay down. You can hear that going there, put it on quarters. Yeah, slightly weird interface there because it doesn't go when you click it, but. And again, while obviously you can have a delay, et cetera, external, it's quite nice to have that available and as part of your program. And then of course, reverb we've got a, a selection and again they're not going to be as good as you know a third party standalone reverb but it's nice to have those in there and they form part of the sound let's see what infinite's got to offer that's normally a, a fairly big boast for a reverb but that's not too bad Yeah, certainly some quite nice things in there. And again, we've got mod wheel, so you can control the reverb amount, which is pretty nice. And finally, of course, the master. Now, this I like. So we've got a, a effectively modulation sequencer here, which they call chop, but you can draw in the curve that you want so this is happening each 16th it's moving to a new segment but you can do some uh, cheesy 90s trance style gating business etc which is quite nice it's quite nice to find that on here and obviously you can turn that on and off there. And again, we've got mod wheel in terms of the volume. So it'll be interesting to see whether that interacts with the chop. So let's just find out whether or not that's the case. So let's turn chop on. Uh, it looks like it does it momentarily, but the, the chop overrides you. But you can't have everything after all, can you? Now, automation is something which I think is always worth looking into because it's the way that you can make your productions more interesting. And while obviously Colors Free has evolving sounds, you may well want to change them over time. And again, we've already seen we've got these modulation options, which are useful, but you may want to alter things separately, etc., which you can do, but it's not set up by default. So normally when you load up a Halion Sonic instrument, you get quick controls already assigned. And as you can see along the bottom here, these are not assigned, but they are pretty easy to set. So all you need to do is right click or two finger tap on any control on screen. And we can just assign a quick control. So let's just do vintage roads one to that. So you can see that's S1 volume. And then we can do the same for this one to quick control two. And now these are assigned and we can see it's changing this, but for whatever reason, it's not changing this. It's not updating. So again, maybe, you know, that's something which hopefully will be improved with Colors Free later on. But I always seem to find the things which people haven't looked at. 
Uh, maybe that says more about me than it does about them. But there we can go. You can see you can assign many of these controls to quick controls, etc. So you could already automate that. But you can also assign to a new automation. So let's just take a quick look at that. The reason you would need to do this is if we look at the automation targets which are available by default. So we can see Halley and Sonic here and slot one. And we can see that while we've got these quick controls, so you can see the quick controls which have been allocated, etc. There's not really anything meaningful here. There's just more quick controls, but we haven't got direct access to anything from within Colors Free. So let's see if we can do something meaningful. So let's look at this modulation control here, and maybe we'll look at this modulation amount. So we'll go to Assign New Automation. And here it's appearing over here as C, S2, LFO amount. So we've got these automation assignments present here. So this is where you would manage any other, so you could delete them, etc. that kind of thing. Now, once you've got that set up, you can then find that and it won't be in the, the place where you may have thought. So again, clicking here, going to more and Halley and Sonic, it appears in automation. So it's not necessarily for slot one because they would all appear in there because they're all user automation. So you expand that and there you can see we've got the option to any of these up to 16. So now we could automate that separately here. And let's just see that that is working. So if we go back to this here, hopefully we should see And you can hopefully see that did update on screen, but it's one of those things. I think maybe we won't see the controls update necessarily as we do them, but they may well. Yeah, you can see that's updated there. So there, there maybe there's a bit of a code thing within Colors Free, but it certainly seems to be responding. But this should give you the option to automate pretty much everything which is available here. So you can see you can just assign to a new automation or you can add it to an existing one. You've also got the option to learn a CC. So you can control this directly from your MIDI controller, which is generating CC controls as well. So you could just assign those. So we've got plenty of options, which is quite nice. The downside of this obviously is if you use different systems, you can end up getting bogged down in it. But certainly if you assign to CC, you can record those CCs within your track as MIDI, and then it will just get played back and that will work as well. So automation wise, well, nothing is necessarily preset for you, and some of the names are perhaps a bit less than friendly. It does mean that you will be able to do pretty much what you want with this and add to those evolving textures by automating it over the course of your piece of music as well, which opens up all sorts of terrible options for me to spend three hours playing around with one sound instead of just the one hour. Great. Now, I have to just mention that at the time of release, Halion Sonic is an early version, and I know certainly in the full version of Halion, there are a couple of uh, weird little bugs. I found while I've been playing around with Colors Free, there's a couple of things which seem to set it off. And at the moment, I can kind of demonstrate that, that I, I saved, attempt to save a patch and then named it, and then it reset. But now when I click through these, I can load up all sorts of different things, but I'm not getting any sound. And that's, here you can see there's a script error. So I think there, there may be possibly a future release which will fix this. I'm certainly not qualified to speak of what's actually happening here, but I certainly I found that if I did the wrong things earlier on, I would definitely be able to get Cubase to crash. So playing around, clicking on the name, and then dragging to change patch. Earlier on was making it crash. At the moment, it's not, but we're getting since getting things which don't seem to be on here. So I can go to Wormland, and then I can seem to be able to go beyond and pick things which maybe aren't there. Now I know that the people who make this actually do full versions of this, so this is kind of a cut down taster version. There are other patches and other sounds available. They do five versions in total, I think. 
So maybe this is just uh, a relic of that. And maybe there's just a little bit tweaking, which will allow this to behave a little bit more consistently. But other than that, I think this is obviously it's free. So it's always uh, generally it's good to get free things, although you shouldn't get bogged down in having a, a, an infinite number of free things because then you just get options anxiety, not knowing which sound to choose. But this is pretty clearly defined. I think this is one of those things where you hear it, either you're going to like it and go, yeah, I could use that a lot. Uh, or it's going to be one of those things where at least you know what it is. So you would always go to it for the kind of sounds that it makes. It's not a general purpose synth. It's pretty specific in its task. And I like that because I now know if I want those kind of, say, boards of canada -y kind of ambient synth wibbling sounds, I've got another synth I can go to. And pretty much everything I go to in it is going to be uh, usable. You can edit the patches pretty easily. While the controls are a little bit uh, odd in terms of uh, user interface choices, there's lots of choice and possibilities available there. And obviously you can load up multiple ones in different instances of Halley and Sonic if you wanted to do that. And then you could play around with those uh, all day long. There's lots of options there. So hopefully, as ever, you found this video useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.